<laughs> Rob and Slim Show. Hi, this is Tristan. Tristan, how you doing? Tristan Miller, you are an actor, writer, and comedian, and poet, correct? That is correct, yeah. Also a podcaster. Cool. Yeah. What's your podcast, Tristan? I host five of them because I am an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I have one of that's about mental health and its correlation to the arts, and that's called Positive and Negative. I have one where I make up fake movies with my roommate called Elevator Pitch. Oh, wow. I have one called Blank History Month where we talk about a subject of history for about a month, and that's with Melissa Mele. I'm sorry, Mele. Um, who I also do a second podcast with um, called Amateur Detective Club, which is a mystery book club, which I also do with my roommate. And that one's really fun. And then I just started a brand new one with my girlfriend called Anime um, Zing, an amazing podcast. And that's where we're, we watch anime, and then I, we review it, and that's been really fun so far. <laughs> that is that's so a lot. Cool. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And just a lot, dude. Did you guys do One Punch Man? <laughs> I got to know. Yeah. Tristan, our Sorry. buddy uh, Slambo just asked if you did One Punch one Man. One Punch Man, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, not yet. We we started with Cowboy Bebop. And oh, I love we're Cowboy Bebop. That. Yeah, we're about nine episodes in recording wise and four yeah. releasing wise, and it's been a blast. Are you excited for the new Fully Cooley? I just saw a trailer. Yeah, that dude, I so saw that, good. dude. So good. Two <laughs> new seasons, man. Now, here. Now here's the gimmick. Here's the here's the hook of the thing is I don't watch anime, but she does. Oh. Like, come to my world, so I know of the <laughs> the cooly cooly of which you speak, oh. but I know not what it is. It is. So even when you guys talk about them, like like you haven't watched Cowboy Bebop, so you're just watching it for the first time. You're saying? Yeah, I am. Dude, I'm watching oh, okay. it for the first time, and mostly my note is, man, Firefly stole a lot of this. <laughs> Cowboy oh, yeah. Bebop's a good starting gotta, one because that's yeah. like that's like what I how I got hooked on anime yeah, was like the yeah, adult me, swim stuff like too. Trigun and exactly like that stuff. you, you, yeah. you got to light up a you got to light up a dude when you <laughs> when you watch some of this stuff. That's fair, yeah. <laughs> if you're into that, <laughs> it, it definitely yeah. enhances. <laughs> Tristan, you're originally yeah. from um, Minnesota, correct? That is correct, Rochester, Minnesota, where the Mayo Clinic is. Yeah. Where did, when did you come to Brooklyn? Um, I came well. I came to New York to do for acting school like five years ago, and then I moved back to Minnesota, and then I moved back out here because I moved back to Minnesota, and that's why I came back out here. So um, <laughs> Minnesota that's really that's sucks, really like huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. It's nice, but it's very quiet and um and very slow. And I am neither of those things, so it wasn't a good fit. That's what I was gonna say, um, just from your stand-up, you're quick-witted, you kind of remind me of uh, Robin Williams when he was younger. Oh, wow. like, yeah, I I appreciate that. Um, you know, that's always a very high compliment. Um, and it's definitely, he was definitely a big influence on me growing up, both in regards to me wanting to stand up and then also just acting in general. I'm like, that guy does something that I like a lot. So, I, there you go. I but, love how he, kind of transforms into what whatever he's talking about he kind of like mm -hmm. like even when he's doing a stand-up he like shape shifts into what it's almost like <laughs> yeah absolutely it's like he, a wizard yeah, or he's something got a tragmog <laughs> transmogrifying spell or whatever yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he makes you see yeah. it he makes you see it yes he mm -hmm. is yeah he acts out what he's saying it's really wonderful mm. yeah yes and mm -hmm. and what did you do first out of all the things you do what was your first out of writing, oh, um, I, comedy, and all that. Um, I started. Sorry, um, I started off as an actor, um, doing plays in high school, and then I just fell in love with that. And then I went to school for acting, and then it's been not exactly slow acting wise because you know it's auditions and it picks up here and there. And then I just kind of started stand up when I was back in Minnesota when it was really slow, because there's a lot of acting in Minnesota, but it's mostly stage and it's mostly like in the summer and then in the spring and that's kind of it okay. at least what i was doing so i started doing stand-up there to kind of just to keep on my feet and i really i always write like stand-up growing up as a kid as well like because i grew up during that time where comedy central would just 
playing special after special after special in mid-afternoon. And I was yes. homeschooled, so I'd get done with school at about like 11 o'clock. And then I just watched Comedy Central all day, which probably wasn't bad. That probably was bad, rather. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> it's good, though. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. And so to answer your question, I started off with acting, but all the other elements have always been there. And in the back of my mind, I just needed to become an adult to go, yeah, you can just do this. I was going to say, like, they kind of all go hand in hand. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're all daisy chained together, and I <laughs> really love that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. What, um, I was yeah. going to ask you, too, um, I saw that, uh, I don't know, uh, it says you're uh, the son of an English teacher. Do your parents, yeah. uh, do they approve of your choice of career? Yeah, um, I, I actually, my, my mother's an English professor. My, my father works for the state of Minnesota, and so that's kind of fun. But um, they, I, my mom said when I went to acting school, my mother said something really, really sweet, which was, um, uh, I turned to her and I was like, right, like the week before I was going to New York to go to acting school, I was like, do you think this is a good idea? I waited until the week before. <laughs> and she's like, well, look, um, your father thinks you can do it. And he's incredibly pragmatic. So if he thinks you can do it, I think you can do it. And so that was really sweet. That They've always is. been really, really supportive. Yeah, okay. that is like probably the best thing you could hear from a parent. Absolutely. We're both on your side. We both think you can do it. It'll just take some time. Just know that. And it's going to be hard. And we're like, yeah, I know. And, and I'm still waiting tables. And that's continuing on. And we'll see how long that'll last. You know? Yeah, hopefully not long. Hopefully not long. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I saw yeah. too. You said in your act that you're bipolar. Is is that true? <laughs> yes, that's not. I did not lie about that. Yeah, um, um, I'm kind of I'm lucky in as much as I'm on the like it's a spectrum disorder. So there's like basically three levels, three tiers of bipolar disorder. Act today. No, um, <laughs> there's like the, there's the bronze membership, which is cyclothymia, which is kind of like the, the normal ups and downs you get with um, the season, only they're accentuated. They're a little bit more extreme. Yes. There's bipolar two, which, which I am, which is um, major depressive episodes and lighter manic episodes, which are called hypomanias. So you, um, like you are very productive. Um, you talk very quickly. You sometimes are really ag agitated and anxious as well. Or sometimes okay. you can be like euphoric and happy. Just you have all this energy. Yes. And then bipolar one disorder is like what Carrie Fisher had, where you have, you could have a psychotic break where you think the walls are talking to you and you see God and then really major depressive episodes where you're just almost panatonic. And I'm really lucky that I'm not on that. And I'm yeah. constantly aware of like, Oh, don't open that door mentally, you know. Does it, does it help to stay as busy as you do? Mm. To, 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 I think with that. I think so because it helps both the major like the ma major mood swings and as much as like when I'm depressed and I have all these responsibilities that I've built in when I'm I'm feeling well. I, they make me get out of the house. They make me like get out of bed, which is like if there's an obligation a, outside yourself when you're purpose. depressed or a little bit more. Yeah, you know. It's, yeah, and then when I'm hyperactive i have all these things to do so i can just do them and then that's fine that, so yeah. it does i think really help um i'm also like about two years sober and so doing all this work really helps me focus all that extra energy where i used to put it into like drinking congratulations so nice. yeah that's 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 Thanks. cool too i can't do that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but all right it's to each their own and if, you know it's not a problem it's not a problem go for it you know more power to you i wish i could you honestly know, though fun, tristan anyway. i used to i used to uh, have a lot of problems with a lot of things and uh for i'd say about 10 years i didn't touch a thing and then i got back into just having a drink you know every wednesday it's the only mm -hmm. day i drink and i'm good with it i'm good with it but that's good balance and everything that's yeah wonderful that you figured out how to do moderation which is wonderful yes yes what yeah, um that's the ideal it's what was what was it doing tristan what was the drinking doing was it um like making your uh bipolar episodes worse or or that yeah that was a major part of it it makes the downs lower and the highs a little bit more you know when because when you're impairing your um, the ability to think you're going to make worse decisions. Right. And then also like I was making some like personal choices that I didn't 
like, you know, it's the kind of the standard stuff. If you look at your behavior, like, well, I don't, I don't really like myself when I'm drunk. Why would I keep doing it? You know, it was yeah. kind of a really reasonable thing. And I remember the day I decided to not drink anymore was like, I had tried to get, like, I had tried to cut it out. And then I, I'm an actor and an artist and I was in my twenties. I'm still in my twenties, yes. but I was like in my early twenties. And I'm like, of course I'm going to go out and drink with my friends. But mm. I tried to cut out a couple of <laughs> times. But the minute I remember this, this final time was I just woke up the next day after drinking and I wasn't hung over and I wasn't really depressed, but I was more depressed and anxious than I had been in the whole month. And I was just like, oh, this is clearly because I went out drinking and I wasn't getting enough sleep and I put a depressant in my body. So I'm just not going to do it. It's just not healthy for me. Yeah. That's... And that was one of the major things. Yeah. That is that is an amazing thing that you recognized it and acted on it to make yourself yeah. better. I, I totally well, respect you. Thank you. For I that. appreciate that. No problem, dude. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh. I heard you do impressions. I read that on your bio. I was going to ask if you could <laughs> do, do one for us. I was going to ask if you do an impression for us. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, one of my favorite uh, ones to do, uh, like the, the Last Jedi came out, and I mm -hmm. love doing all the, the voices from Star Wars. And one of my favorites is this. I love, you know, um, Harrison Ford, uh, when he got to be that old. Look, I don't know if I can even move my face, let alone do any acting. Yeah. That sort of thing. <laughs> and then I really loved, and it's sad, I really love doing Carrie Fisher's voice, which is really fun to do because no one expects it coming out of my face. <laughs> but it's sad now. You I know, know. Because she's gone. But, like, yeah. the joke, one of the jokes I do on stage is, um, tell Harrison... Her last words were, tell Harrison I was faking. Because I enjoy that joke because I think she would have liked it. She so. would have. She would have. <laughs> yeah, she definitely would. <laughs> yes. I yeah. love I it. Just bought, <laughs> I just bought <laughs> The Last Jedi on DVD. You just though. bought it? I know it yeah. came out like yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Dropped. Yeah, I, I bought I, – I was – at Best Buy at midnight, and I bought the, the Blu-ray. Cool. I, um, yeah, I was very happy with the, the movie. I I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, I, but I loved uh, what was the one before that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Force, Force Awakens. Force Awakens. I, yes. I, yeah. I, I like The Last Jedi, but it's it's definitely not my favorite. I honest, I absolutely didn't hate it, but yeah, there was something like... <laughs> no, 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 no. Rogue One I was a better... I absolutely didn't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things, that was Ro wonderful. That was a wonderful thing. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Rogue, Rogue One, One Rogue One was a better was movie. Where it's at. <laughs> it was yeah. a better movie. Rogue One was... I don't, know if I, I don't know if I agree with that, but it's a very fun movie, and I really love seeing all the, um, like, an Imperial dominated yeah we kind of don't we yeah. don't see that as it's really inferred at in the original trilogy and just seeing them like on jetta when they're like oh there's just stormtroopers everywhere oh no <laughs> I, I the love, best thing was um when i went when i took my sons to see uh rogue one my my one son william leaned in and he's like daddy i just want to see I just want to see Darth Vader fight, and then at the end you got that. Yeah. You got that scene. That scene is from Super That's Star fair. Wars for the the Super Nintendo game. Really? Yeah, because mm -hmm. when you put that that cartridge in, it, it begins. It's just dark, and you see Rebel soldiers. All of a sudden, you see the, the red lightsaber, and just Vader just oh. kills everyone. I fucking love that. <laughs> That's cool. I fucking That's love great. that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tristan, you you have over eleven yeah. years of acting, correct? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's once again like from starting off in high school doing plays. But it was one of those things of like, I did an acting troupe when I was thirteen, and it became very clear that like, oh no, this is what I like doing. This is fun. This is yeah. the only thing that's getting me out of the house, sort of thing. Um, and then I proceeded to do like at least eight shows a year. So that's like sometimes I was doing three shows at a time just as like a 16 year old and just like keeping busy that way. Wow. And that is, that is I think amazing. I've always been just trying to take that level of output since because I was just like, Oh, I'm at home. I'm with my parents. They're paying for everything. So I can just go do whatever I want. Yeah. And I miss that every day. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What, um, what has been your most favorite uh, role that you've done? Oh, um, Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's this play called Rabbit Hole um, by David Lindsay Abrere, 
Um, and he, weirdly, he also wrote like the book for Shrek the musical and a couple other things. He's a very accomplished uh, playwright. Um, I was lucky enough to meet him a few years back for a signing, but um, he did this play called Rabbit Hole in which um, it's, a, it's about a couple whose son, who's like, uh, I think four-year-old son gets hit by a car and dies and you see the aftermath of that and it's just four people it's the couple they're um the the wife's mother and then i played the guy who hit the kid and i was only in two scenes in that play but it was certainly the like the most work emotionally and also just but also fun at the same time, and it just felt really good, and I, I really loved that play. That was probably my favorite. It sounds amazing. It sounds really yeah, good. it's really great. There's a movie version of it with Nicole Kidman and Aaron Eckhart that I have not seen, but need to. Yeah. Aaron Eckhart's fucking great. Who's that? Mm-hmm. He's got, he played Two-Face um, in the the, uh, the Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. He was hard. Remember the injuries? one with uh, Heath Ledger? Yeah, he's, I think I only saw the first two. Is he in one of those? Yeah, yeah, he's in the he's second. In the, the, the one with the Joker. Wow, I have to rewatch that thing. Yeah, I dude. don't remember that. Yeah, I man, don't remember he was that too at all. Dude, I thought <laughs> that like yeah. he was because un- like obviously Ledger was a great was an amazing Joker. He was a great Joker. But he was kind of yeah. undermined by that. Because, really? Yeah, I do. I dude, have to go back. I can't he was a, I can't remember that. Honestly, yeah. he was a fucking great Two Face. He was wow. like Tommy Lee mm-hmm. Jones was like that. That that script was garbage. Like Tommy Lee Jones yeah. did, he did good with what he was given. Yeah, I, I like Tommy Lee Jones, but that script was a piece of <laughs> fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Which one was he in? Was he in? Batman Harvey Forever. Dent in the first Batman is Billy D. Williams. Yeah, Billy D. Williams. Like, no, never mind. Yeah, Which like what? A, I really would have loved him because I would have loved to see that. I would have, yeah, exactly. Billy D. Williams would have killed his that room. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, would have loved it. <laughs> He's all, um, Aaron Eckhart is also in this great movie called Thank You for Smoking, and it's a satire yeah. about like. He's so good in it. I He's love that yeah. movie. I do. I, I yeah. It makes you think. It makes you think on the other side. Like, mm-hmm. all right, mm-hmm. yeah, smoking is bad for you, but at the same time, it it kind of did build. Like, yeah, the, we're living the way we're living right now because of the, tobacco. Because of yeah, tobacco. Yeah, the success of yes. tobacco. The mm-hmm. tobacco. Tristan, do you have any upcoming projects that you could talk about? Oh, um, sure. Um, I just started this uh, web series. It's a series of like video essays, and I'm working on a second one now um, called Mental Health in the Media. And it's where I look at um, properties and, pardon me, uh, I look at properties and I see what we can learn about mental health from the properties that aren't necessarily about mental health. Like the first one is about stranger things and how you, we should react as a community to when someone does have like for example a psychotic episode which kind of like you can with the way stranger things season two handles will buyers like experience is very similar to the way psychotic episodes are handled and that parallel there and then the second one that i'm working on now is actually about the last jedi and how it reflects um how people process trauma and ptsd because the characters there and like identity issues and because there's a there's a lot of meaty stuff there in that movie about uh, with those themes involved cool yeah, yeah i like that transition yeah. i love yeah. that and the character of finn he definitely mm-hmm. had he definitely had PTSD. PTSD, yeah yes. because the, oh yeah for sure they were forcing him to commit these just atrocities yeah. and finally, I want to see a yeah. backstory on him yeah, yeah like Finn. he yeah. he fascinates me he is yeah. and I want to see more with Finn absolutely yeah. yes yeah yeah I liked um, Finn I, and I think in this second movie one of the problems I have with the second movie was that they didn't mm-hmm. do enough with Finn yeah they sure. they had him behind that. yeah they had him in it but like yeah. they didn't they he, like he was one of the main characters in like the force awakens yeah yeah. and they kind of just like kicked them off to the side as like this side side Mm -hmm. side side show yeah i like the chick that that he worked with in the second one oh yeah dude she's amazing i love her she got so much hate and 
I, really? I, yeah, I think that they, for no reason. Yeah, yeah, she didn't do she anything wrong. Anything. I don't think she I didn't did. even know that. Yeah. yeah, no, I I loved her as a character. She, Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, she's she was a good character. Mm -hmm. Did she just get hate? You think because Carrie Fisher died? No, I think she got hate. No. Like, I I don't know what it is. Like, a lot of people thought this movie was like way too like. I get. I, I I guess they thought it was too like feminist and preachy. Mm. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Either. I didn't see that at all. I love the lady that stepped mm -hmm. in for Carrie Fisher. I yeah. wanted to see more of her. Yeah, the, the I, lady that stepped yeah. in for Leia. That's another thing. I was I was pissed off that they killed her Me off because too. she should have been the one. They sh <laughs> yeah yeah they should have killed off Carrie. Yeah, because obviously she's. She's gonna. She's yeah, dead. She's, you can't do anything with her. Yeah, it was sad. It would have anyway. been sad anyway. But yes, I wanted to see her. Yeah, take, take the. I rain. wanted mm -hmm. to see her. Yeah, exactly. There, there, and and you could tell that there was like an interesting backstory. We're yeah, ne we're never gonna. We're never gonna hear. Never gonna see well, it. Actually, I can actually tell you a little bit about Admiral Holdo. Um, in as much as is, there's this really great um, young adult novel. Um, about prince, it's called Princess Leia. Um, sorry, Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Um, and Admiral Holdo and Leia actually meet when they were kids, and so they've known each other for most of their lives. And that's why those scenes, like, there's a lot of like, you can tell they have a relationship, and th there's a little bit more backstory there cool. with wow. Holdo, and it's really worth a read. Re where, yeah, absolutely. Where right. could that be found? Um, Audible.com is where I do it because I'm dyslexic and farsighted, so I'm bad at reading. <laughs> um, it's narrated by, I believe, January Lavoy does the narration, and she's an amazing person. Um, Claudia Gray re wrote the novel, and she's a really great um, novelist, and I really like her work. Cool. Um, but you can just find it on like Amazon or Barnes and Noble, wherever you can buy a book. Awesome. Yeah, sounds sounds like a yep. good read. Good read. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. What um ah uh, what was I gonna ask? What's the craziest thing, Tristan, that you've seen in production of a play or uh, a show that you've been involved in? Oh, the craziest thing I've seen? I don't, I don't know. Okay, so yeah, okay, so I was doing this stand-up show. I was doing the stand-up show, and um, here in New York, there's this there's this bar called the Jekyll and Hyde Bar. I've been there, and then there's a yeah it's cool yeah. it's um, cool one, it is it's really fun it's a horror themed bar and there's some comedy shows that go down there and i was helping produce them when i was on the lineup a lot a couple of months ago and now i'm just kind of helping here and there um or hopping on here and there um but we had someone who just happened to be really into into the theme and they were dressed as a werewolf and they had a violin so we closed the show with this person in a werewolf mask <laughs> playing the violin to the end of this comedy show. <laughs> and I think that's probably one of the weirdest things. And yes. it was so delightful. I was going to say, I, I don't know. I kind of want to see that right now. <laughs> like, uh, it sounds was it amazing. like one of those was cheap, so fun. was it like one of those cheap werewolf masks or was it like a real good? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a cheap werewolf. Like, uh, you're a that's even you're better. A thing. That is, that is amazing. Just playing the violin in a werewolf mask. It was amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it, mm -hmm. Tristan. That's great. <laughs> Thank you mm -hmm. so much for talking to us, Tristan. You are you're Thank incredible. you for having me on. Absolutely. And where can everybody find you? Um, you can go to www.tristanjmiller.com for info about like shows and all uh, the like mental health and media and the podcasts and stuff are all there. Um, and then I'm at Charm Chancer on Twitter. I think my Twitter is decent and fun and it's mostly puns and weird polls that i do so nice. i enjoy it but, i love I you will too i love polls that that's one of my favorite mm -hmm. things that's one of, <laughs> once i see once i see them posted on a twitter that's that's one of my favorite things mm -hmm. and like you said like yeah just funny stuff funny cool stuff yeah thank you and so my much current, oh go ahead no no you go Okay, my current poll is: Do you think Adam Driver should play Waluigi? Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, they need to get Danny DeVito for her. For, <laughs> for, for, for Mario. Mario. Yes, that would be amazing. <laughs> like a weird twins remake. Yeah. <laughs>
God, they need to do this. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. Know. I love oh, it. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Mario. <laughs> you piece of shit. That's great. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> Have a good one, Tristan. <laughs> Yeah, you too. Thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's been a blast, brother. Yep. Have, Have a good one. Take care. Take care, man. Cool. <laughs>